In this video, we're going to learn about mitosis and cytokinesis. So we'll cover what mitosis and cytokinesis are, the key stages of mitosis and cytokinesis, and finally, how uncontrolled cell division can lead to cancer. Let's start by understanding what mitosis and cytokinesis are. These are two key stages of the cell cycle that follow interphase. Mitosis comes directly after interphase and is the process where the nucleus of a cell divides into two, and each new nucleus has a complete copy of the cell's DNA. Cytokinesis follows mitosis and is the actual splitting of the cell's cytoplasm. This creates two separate cells that each have their own complete set of organelles and enough cytoplasm to function properly. So, mitosis and cytokinesis are both key parts of cell division and their function is to allow one cell to produce two genetically identical daughter cells. This is important because cell division allows organisms to grow from a single zygote into a multicellular organism made up of billions of cells. Mitosis also helps us to replace old or damaged cells, like when you cut your arm and need new skin cells to seal up the wound. And some organisms even use it for asexual reproduction as well. And this is why lots of plants can produce offspring that are identical to the original plant. In addition, mitosis is also involved in the development of body plans. And body plans just refer to how all the different body parts of our body grow in the right places whilst we're developing. Finally, mitosis is critical for producing stem cells, which are able to differentiate into various cell types. Next, let's look at the key stages of mitosis and cytokinesis. Mitosis is a continuous process that's typically divided into four main stages, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. Starting with prophase, during this stage, the long, thin strands of DNA coil up and condense, which makes the chromosomes visible under a microscope. Importantly though, because DNA replication has just happened during interphase, at this point, each chromosome will appear as a replicated chromosome, which means it contains two identical sister chromatids. At the same time as the chromosomes condense, small structures, called centrioles, move to opposite poles of the cell. This means this centriole ends up at this end, and the other ends up at the opposite end. And then, at the same time, they begin to form spindle fibres, which are these thin, thread-like strands that will pull the replicated chromosomes apart later on during mitosis. Meanwhile, the nucleolus disappears and the nuclear envelope breaks down which is this membrane around the nucleus. This means the chromosomes are now floating freely within the cell's cytoplasm. And just to be clear here, a human cell would actually have 46 chromosomes at this point. We're just showing three to keep things simple. The following stage is then metaphase, where the replicated chromosomes line up at the cell equator, which is this middle line of the cell. They attach to the spindle fibers by their centromeres and if we look at our replicated chromosomes again, we can see the centromere is this part of the chromosome that links the two sister chromatids. At this point in the process, there's a crucial checkpoint called the metaphase checkpoint, which ensures that all chromosomes are properly attached to the spindle fibers before the cell moves on to the next stage. Moving on to anaphase, during this stage, the centromeres divide and the sister chromatids separate as the spindle fibers contract and shorten. And this pulls each of the chromatids to opposite poles of the cell. The chromatids are pulled by their centromeres, which gives them this sideways V shape as they move. Finally, in telophase, the chromosomes uncoil back into their thread like form at each pole of the cell. New nuclear envelopes form around each set of chromosomes, like this. And then the nucleoli reappear as we can see here, so we've basically got one cell with two identical nuclei in it. Then after mitosis is complete, cytokinesis occurs. Cytokinesis is just the division of the cytoplasm and is caused by the cell membrane pinching inwards. It results in two genetically identical daughter cells, each with their own nucleus and their own set of organelles. Finally, let's explore how uncontrolled cell division can lead to cancer. 
Cell division is tightly regulated by genes that control the cell cycle, which helps to make sure that cells only divide when necessary. If there are mutations in these genes, though, they can no longer regulate the cell cycle as needed, and this can lead to uncontrolled cell division. And this can result in the formation of a mass of abnormal cells called a tumour. Sometimes these tumours stay in one place and don't cause too much harm. But other times they can spread into nearby tissues, and when tumours become invasive like this, we describe them as being cancerous, and they can spread throughout the whole body. Because of this, Cancer treatments are usually designed to target specific stages of cell division in order to stop the growth of cancerous cells. For instance, some treatments may prevent DNA replication during interphase, whilst others may stop the formation of spindle fibers during metaphase. These treatments can affect non-cancerous healthy cells too though, but because cancer cells divide more quickly, they're more likely to be damaged by these treatments first. If you haven't heard yet, you can find all of our videos on our website, cognito.org. You'll also find questions, flashcards, exam style questions, and past papers. And we track all of your progress so that you always know what to study next. So sign up for free by clicking here or browse our playlist here on YouTube.